from the Library of Congress in Washington, D.C. So before I introduce Tamara Pierce, let me say I'm Yasmin Khan. I work in the Conservation Division of the Library of Congress as a rare book conservator. In my office, we are, are responsible for the care and treatment, preservation and treatment of the library's rare and special collections, including some of the, uh, the nation's treasures. And now for the main event. Tamara Pierce was awarded the Margaret A. Edwards Award last year by the American Library Association for her, quote, lasting and significant co contribution to young adult literature. She has written over 24 books and innumerable short stories over the last 30 years, many of which have been translated into other languages such as German, Danish, and Swedish. It was a great day for her readers when Tamara Pierce was born in 1954 in South Connellsville, Pennsylvania. An avid reader, she started writing stories around the age of six. After being introduced to J.R. Tolkien's The Lord of the Rings trilogy, Miss Pierce started writing fantasy and science fiction. In 1983, her first book, Alana, The First Adventure, was published. In it, she touched on many... <laughs> in it, she touched on many of the themes that appear in her subsequent works, subsequent work, such as strong female characters, the rights of animals and humans to be treated fairly and well, and the balance between power and moral behavior. Ms. Pierce has written five book series set in the Tortal universe. The Song of the Lioness, yeah. The Immortals, The Protector of the Small, Daughter of the Lioness, and Becca Cooper. She has, she has also written the Circle of Magic series and the Circle Opens. Her new book, Battle Magic, is part of the Circle books. In her biography, Miss Pierce states that, that books, owned and read, I presume, are the main yardstick by which she measures true wealth. With each book she writes, her readers, we, her readers, become richer. Please welcome Tamara Pierce. Good afternoon, everyone. I would like to read for you a small excerpt from my new book, Battle Magic. One, outside the walls of Garmachine, capital of Gyeongshi, in the canyon of the Tomsho River, far to the east of Winding Circle Temple in the month of Carp Moon. Two boy men sat on the river's eastern bank where an open-fronted tent gave them shelter from the chilly spring wind. It whistled down the canyon, making the banders around them snap. Briar Moss was the older of the two, 16, and a fully accredited mage of the Living Circle School in Emelon. He was the foreigner, his skin a light. <coughs> I, I beg your pardon. His, his skin a light shade of bronze, his nose long and thin, his eyes a startling gray green in this land of brown eyed Easterners. He wore a green silk quilted tunic pattern in. <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me. It's a little dry in here. He wore a green silk quilted tunic patterned with light green willow leaves, gold brown quilted breeches, and the calf tie soft boots that were popular in the mountains. He sat cross-legged on cushions with a <coughs> <laughs> oh, 
Oh, no, please don't leave. <laughs> you know, no matter how many times I've done that bit, and I've done it for, oh, 13 years or so now, I never get tired of looking out at that sea of still, frozen faces. <laughs> and I know you're thinking, oh no. We have the writer from hell. <laughs> she is going to drone at us until the end of time. <laughs> they are going to find us here in the next century. Skeletons stuck to this ground by strands of cobweb, dead of boredom, in the hour that never ended. And the thought of your pain and suffering makes me happy. <laughs> I am not a nice person. You need to understand this because this is how our little time together works. I babble at you briefly and then you ask questions. You may ask any question you like. Adults, no stomping on people later for asking questions I told them they could ask. I am a professional, I know what I'm doing. <laughs> so, you may ask about my private life, about our many cats, about my spouse creature. Oh, hi spouse creature. He looks like a tomato, <laughs> and he's twice as sweet. You, uh, all of you have dads or granddads or brothers or uncles or cousins. You've all seen those first thing in the morning with the hair and the hair and the hair and the hair <laughs> and the scratching and the noises. If that isn't a creature, I don't know what is. <laughs> you can ask about publishing. I have worked in publishing as a literary agent's assistant, a part-time editor for two magazines, as the head writer for a company that did original radio, comedy, and drama. Uh, which means that not only did I write and direct my own work, but it was my job to sit down with anyone in the company who had the sh a shred of an idea and beg, wheedle, cajole, bribe, threaten, co-write, rewrite, whatever it took to get a working manuscript out of that person which means that not only did I help them do that, but I learned an awful lot of tools for my own writing. Um, I have also, what else have I done? I am working on the Tortall Companion with Julie Holderman, Timothy E. Leiby. Say hello to the nice people, Tim. 
um, and assorted other folks compiling things like the Herald's Guide, the guide, the uh, course syllabus for the Mages School of the Royal University, a diplomat's guide to the Capital Chorus in Tortal, um, Alan's and Tom's comments on their assignments of the lines of kings of Tortal and Barzun. And when you get a five-year-old and an eight-year-old commenting on kings, they, they don't always take their homework seriously. <laughs> um, rough reports from spies in the field um, and assorted other documents. I um, also, Tim there, worked roughly 15 years as an electronics writer for consumer electronics magazines. And um, in the great unwritten law of marital sharing, particularly when he was an editor for a computer game magazine, now fortunately deceased, I was the unpaid copywriter and copy editor for that magazine. Not that I'm bitter. I also don't work for free anymore. <laughs> I co-edited a collection of short stories and I wrote an anthology of short stories and I wrote and sold a number of articles. So if you have a writing question, I will do my best to answer it for you. If you have questions about my books and for some reason, I think one or two of you may have <laughs> a question about my books. And if you have a writing question, I know given the size of our group, I'm not going to be able to get to many questions. But anything and everything you ask me, I will answer you honestly. But not because I'm a good person. <laughs> We've gotten that out of the way. What I am is a rotten liar. I always get caught. I would rather tell you the truth and risk embarrassing myself, which quite frankly is something I do fairly often. And I'm used to it. And I would rather do that. Keep going. <laughs> Tim, you're blocking people's way. Um, What was I saying? <laughs> yeah, I get caught. So I would rather tell the truth, even if I risk embarrassing myself, than get caught in a lie and have you not believe anything important I have to say. That's what I was getting at. So the rest of this conversation, and it is a conversation, is now up to you. You ask, I answer. Uh -huh. And I actually have two short questions. Okay. First of all, uh, George R. R. Martin described there are two types of authors, architects and gardeners, um, J.K. Rowling being an architect, where she lined out everything about the story and then went with it, or George R. R. Martin, who just had an idea and just let it grow. What would you consider yourself? Like many short and agreeable answers that doesn't really always cover everybody. I'm both. <laughs> I have an idea, usually by the time I sit down to work on a book, I have been thinking about it. Right now, the book I'm working on is Exile, which is a story of a young boy full of hope and, and way more magic than he can keep a grip on who goes to school at the university at Carthac with his little friends, Varese and Ozorn, and everything's going along just spanky fine until he's 17 and Ozorn becomes the heir to the throne, and he finds out that instead of be being in the silly classes all by himself because he can't light a candle, he has actually been taking mastery courses, which is graduate level in our world. And poor Aram 
is kind of startled, and Ozorn wants to use him as his own personal mage. Aram being, when he graduates, he decides to take the name Numair. I've been planning that book for 10 years, but I didn't know he had a girlfriend at the time I started the book. I didn't know until two years ago he'd be using contact juggling. I didn't know until now that, um, well, there's stuff <laughs> for reasons. So. We all work in different ways, and some of us just plunge in, and some of us don't. And the additional question is, have you ever read the fan fiction that goes along with your book, and do you like it? I don't read fanfic, um, so I can't say if I'd like it or not. I don't want to end up in a lawsuit situation like Marianne Zimmer Bradley did. That said, I neither do I disapprove fanfic because I, I, in my day, well, I started out in trying to write my own fantasy, but also in my day, <laughs> we called them Star Trek stories and Conan stories. We didn't, we didn't call them fanfic, and we didn't have no fancy interwebs to put them on. We shared them with our friends, and we were glad to have them. Thank you very much. You're very welcome. Oh, oh. yes. Um, so all of your books have, like, really interesting, strong female characters, all of whom are really amazing, but they're all really, really different. And I can't imagine like writing something from the point of view of someone who's so completely different from myself and my own mindset. And I was wondering like which one you like identified with the most and then which ones were harder to write and harder to imagine like being. Hmm. And also who's your favorite? <laughs> Short round, redheaded, wears glasses, loves books, loves animals, has a bad attitude. <laughs> okay, I never tried the lightning thing, or I, if I did, I couldn't make it work. <laughs> but, but Tris may have more than a passing resemblance to me. Um, hardest, the, well, Ollie. I discovered I was way more like Ollie's mother than I had ever thought in my life because she made me crazy. <laughs> she was flirty and feminine and manipulative and sneaky and all the things that make me nuts. I got my revenge. <laughs> and I may even, well, I will go back and, and write her again, but she, she made she made me absolutely bug nuts. Um, and as far as favorites, obviously I love my heroes, or I couldn't write entire books and entire series about them. But even characters that you wouldn't think I would even remember, like Tobe, or like. Um, No, no, um, the, the god king of Yangshi. Well, I remember him, he's recent. But even the villains, I mean, sometimes the villains are very liberating because they do all the rotten stuff you wish you could have gotten away with but never could, and then they go off to Executioner's Hill and you could say bye-bye. <laughs> um, the pigeons in the Becca Cooper books. I knew those <laughs> pigeons personally. And Slapper particularly, <laughs> that bird, I named him Gloucester after Richard III because he had a humped back and he had a club foot and he would land on my shoulder of my leather jacket and brace his foot, bad foot, in the 
strap there so he wouldn't fall off, and he'd slap me with his wing, and I'd feed him, and then he'd slap me again before he flew off. He, and he had bright yellow eyes, so he stared like a crazy person. <laughs> so even the smaller characters. Um, I've really loved your books ever since I picked them up, and obviously I still haven't put this one down yet. Uh, I just bought it you know, two hours ago. Um, I might already be about 150 through it. Um, I was going to ask where you were. Yeah, chapter six. <laughs> I read fast. Um, no, that wasn't what that wasn't what the face was for. Well, yes, chapter six. I don't know what happens in chapter six. I, mean. um, I don't want to say what happens. Okay, okay, spoilers. Yeah. <laughs> spoilers. Sweetie. It wouldn't be a spoiler for me. No. Um, oh, sorry. Um, no, that that was me reminding me. Yeah. yeah. Um, to ask though is I noticed you had a tattoo on your arm. Could you tell us maybe why you got that? Oh, this one? Yeah. Cats walk all over me. <laughs> Above it is the old feminist symbol from back in the 1970s, which is when officially a feminist before they kicked me out <laughs> for a sense of humor. <laughs> well, and, and sleeping with the enemy. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that's, that's kind of difficult. So I have decided, decided whether to be Kel or you when I grow up. <laughs> so just in case I decide to be you, how do you get over writer block? Okay, on my webpage, in the fact section, because it's a big group and, and I want to do this quick, but on my webpage in the facts, fact section, I have everything I know about getting, dealing with writer's block because it is the single biggest problem that writers have, bar none. Very quickly, in, introduce another character because a lot of times people will change how they react when somebody new comes in. If you've got two girlfriends, bring in a boy, a good looking one. They will change how they behave toward each other. Or if you've got two guys, bring in a girl. Doesn't always have to be good looking. <laughs> um, have something happen. The, you have a rainstorm, the power goes out, people get in the car, and the, here's the thing. The person you thought was bravest and brightest and most wonderful, the person everybody looks up to as the hero, freak, the car gets into an accident and that person freaks out. And the little mousy person that everybody thought was nothing much is the one who gets the key out of the ignition, pulls on the emergency brake, gets everyone out of the car, gets pressure on the bleeding, and calls 911. You never can tell how people re will react in an emergency. You can live with people for decades in peaceful times. In, in war times, Civil War soldiers called it going to see the elephant or going to see the mountain. Guys in our wars go call it going to see the elephant or going to see the mountain. You go to war to learn something important about yourself. Being put through a crisis of some kind, the house is on fire, uh, there's a flood. There are a lot of people in Colorado right now who know something very different about themselves from what they knew last month. There are a lot of veterans 
right now who know something different about themselves. Also, try telling it from the point of view of someone else. Did I say that? No, not yet. No. Okay. Try doing it because if you've ever played telephone or if you've ever heard someone tell a story, well, I came in and I was going to say something to her and she looked right past me, so I just went on by. And, and you say, no, no, she was going to, she was reaching out to tap your shoulder and you saw something else and you went right on by. No two people say, see the same thing the same way. Does that help? Oh, and also, my mother was wondering, um, sorry to take you up on that, but what, what was the one thing you would change in your novels if there's one thing you could change? If I changed any single thing in my novels, my fans would kill me. <laughs> Good point. So I never would, ever. Try to do better in the next book, yes. Change, no. So first of all, thanks for writing awesome females before it was cool. Like I, I literally remember the moment that I was like, oh, that in the stack, this book looks interesting. And then like, no hold back like, after that. But when I first read the Alana series, I was so pissed at her for like going off with the dragon when she obviously Hormones. I know. Well, I read it again when I saw that you were going to be here, and I get it now. So I didn't know. I mean, that was back in the 80s when you wrote this. So did you have an idea? Because I don't think a lot of other books have done that, like given the female character the ability to decide, you know, kind of sexual, yeah, freedom, nope. freedom or like. So I wrote. I wrote the first draft during the 70s. We were all doing that <laughs> as often as possible. I saw no reason to change it because I felt that women should have the right to be sexually adventurous like men. I did not think. <laughs> the one true love, the one you don't meet your first there are people who have met their first love and it's worked out for the rest of their lives, but they are a lot more rare than the current spate of novels would have you believe. A lot of us don't find a really good love that we can settle down with and talk books and movies and animals with for the rest of our lives until we've been through quite a, far, a few other false starts and some other fun times first. <laughs> you, should ha you should get out there, you should experiment, you should get to know yourself, and you should get to know yourself in terms of dealing with the same sex, the opposite sex, the trans sex, the bisex, however it works. It frightens me that girls are growing up reading books that says, you'll meet him in high school and you'll live together forever and ever and ever. That just gives me a rash. <laughs> Still, not gonna change that. Oh, I got two minutes. I'm sorry, guys. Quickly. Thank you. Dasha, thank you for Oda. Thank you for writing queer characters that go off and do awesome stuff and don't just be queer. Thank you for writing characters that, you know, do the whole coming out thing, but really, there's this crazy empress, so there's a whole lot more important things going on. Thank you for writing queer characters that do awesome stuff, and it's not about them being queer. Thank you. And thank you for writing queer characters and doing it right. Thank you. And are you planning on writing any more? <laughs> Absolutely. It, you don't just put up tokens and say, there, I've paid my dues. OK, I'm a swell person. No. No, people are people are people. They show up everywhere. Then please write more of them. Yes. Absolutely. One more. 
Um, I think it's clear you've inspired generations of young women and boys too. And I'm just wondering in terms of like major female characters, did you set out to do that with them or did it just evolve? I set out to write what I wanted to read when I was 12 years old and Eowyn was giving up her sword and Jirel of Joyry was saying to her men at arms, why are you cowering in the corner like so many women? Um, and Lessa of Pern was hating other women and Red Sonia, whom I am now writing for, so don't hold it against me. Was, tri was rolling around in, in a red chain mail bikini when I knew after sleeping in the shade in a wet bathing suit that there are consequences <laughs> when it's cold out and you're in a wet garment and metal gets colder than a wet garment at night. Um, I wanted something I could believe. I wanted, I'm into overtime. I'll, I'm being quick. I'm, I'm, I'm almost done. Swear to, swear. Um, I wanted characters that were real to me. I wanted characters who went to the bathroom. I wanted characters who had to bundle up in the winter. I wanted to read characters that I could believe in and I wanted them to be girls. One, is it short? Okay, quickly. Okay, so um, why did you decide to write about Evie and Briar and not any of the other students? Um, well, because Evie and Briar is the one I got to. See, the timeline is I skipped because everybody was heartbroken that I'd split the four up. Um, I skipped to Will of the Empress. And then because I had written Melting Stones so I could get the courage to write the Becca books in first person because I'd never written a whole book in first person so I wrote Melting Stones in first person because Evie was in my ear. Um, I wrote that. But now I went to write Battle Magic so I could fill in the gap between what happened so everybody'd stop asking me what happened to Evie and Briar and Rose Thorne that they got all that PTSD going on. So now I'll be able to get well, Tris is next. But then I'll be able to get to the other students. Thank you everyone. This has been a presentation of the Library of Congress. Visit us at LOC.gov.